I'm Robert Anthony. I'm Joelle Anthony. This is Watson. In 2020, we felt God's call in our lives to do something incredibly radical. In 2023, we sold our flower shop, our home, just about everything we own, and purchased our Winnebago Flex RV. This began our trek into the vast unknown. Our mission is to take you along, showing you things you otherwise may never be able to see. We would be so thankful to have you follow along and become part of our adventures. Now, let's get to today's video. How are you doing? It's uh, of course me, Robert Anthony. Um, Joel is back at camp right now and it's an early morning here in the Mojave National Preserve. I wanted to take this opportunity and just give you a brief synopsis or at least an update with regard to what's been going on, where we've been and what we've been doing because I know a lot of you are following along and you enjoy that. So this is our next stop. This is the hole in the wall campground in the middle of the Mojave National Preserve. Normally, we don't, uh, we, don't, we don't pay for camping, but I decided with this particular campground that it was well worth it. It's a $12 a night campground. You just can't beat it for the money. Uh, it is, however, out here. Uh, the Mojave National Preserve sits between uh, Joshua Tree and Death Valley, smack dab in the middle of I-15 and I-40. This particular campground is on the more easterly side and there's only one way in right now because the north side of the preserve uh, was kind of, the roads have been washed out because of all the rain. We came up here to do some desert wildflower photography um, because I've been to this area before and this, this area, this hole in the wall campground area has one of the highest concentrations of desert wildflowers in the Mojave, in the Mojave National Preserve. Trouble is it's a little early. It's April 5th as I'm recording this video right now and um, it is, uh, we're at about 4,000 feet in elevation. So right now, the majority of the wildflowers, I can see them all, but they're just in bud form. The buds are just starting to crack and we're not gonna be able to stay here long enough. So we'd have to be here probably till the middle of, middle to the end of April in order to be able to actually see all this stuff in bloom. I found this place uh, years ago with uh, my son and my son Levi and my son Ed. We came here doing desert wildflower photography at the end of February. And um, 
There weren't any up here at this point, but we did a hike here and it was a great hike. It's the Rings Loop Trail. But about, uh, let me see, we've been three weeks now, four weeks now from, well, almost four weeks from leaving the Glamis Hot Springs area. So we drove from Glamis and we went over to the Anza Borrego State Park, the Anza Borrego Desert State Park in California. That's near Borrego Springs, which I didn't know was quite a tourist destination. It's quite popular. That area was amazing. We stayed at, uh, at a free dispersed campsite uh, that had an amazing array of wildflowers and, and right in the campsite. Um, I'm grateful that we have the rig that we have, the, the smaller rig, only 22 feet total in length, anything bigger and we couldn't have gotten in there. But when we were inside that camp, campground, we were in one of the most sought after areas for the desert lilies. And I didn't even know that. Where we were at in the Anza Borrego Desert State Park, if I'm not mistaken, that is where the majority of the desert lilies are at. They're such a beautiful flower. It was amazing to be able to photograph those. I got a couple of really great shots at sunrise that I was quite happy about. But when we were in uh, Anza Borrego, there are a few areas there that are, that are wonderful areas to do wildflower photography. We were there ah, third week of March. Perfect, at least for this year. We've, we, uh, we did a lot of photography and filming at the Henderson Canyon area. I think it's Henderson Canyon. It might be Henderson Valley. I'm not sure. Uh, that is uh, one of the most sought after for wildflowers. It's a beautiful area that just is, uh, the mountains V down uh, and, and the valley goes into the mountains and it just makes a perfect photo opportunity. It was amazing walking through there, seeing the yellows and the purples and, 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 the, and the whites and the pinks. Uh, Joelle just was losing her mind. She's never seen anything like that. And it was so wonderful to be able to take her through there and allow her to see that and do photography. She took a huge interest in learning about all of these flowers and has been posting like crazy on her personal Facebook. She has a desert wildflower of the day, and that's been going on for weeks. There were so many different varieties that we were able to see. One of the other areas that we went to uh, past Henderson Canyon was, uh, or Henderson Valley, whatever it is, uh, was the Coyote Canyon. Uh, Coyote Canyon has a whole different slew of flowers. They were also at peak at this period of time. Uh, we spent about five or six days in the area. Uh, that was an amazing place. Uh, the Coyote Canyon drives up to a creek. We didn't go that far. You go in, if you're going to drive in, you go in about a mile. You're not going to see much different, but that area was full of lupine, one of my favorite things. Uh, just the, the desert lupine is just gorgeous. It was a cool thing to be able to go through and spend some time doing some photography there, both at sun, well, we did both of those at sunset. We did Henderson Valley, Henderson Canyon at, uh, at sunrise and sunset, but uh, we did more, more of the sunrise photography, uh, early sun photography around our campsite. So we went through, uh, we tried to find another area. I, I, I'm trying to remember the name. We went to Coyote. Rattlesnake Canyon was another area that we went. I'm pretty sure it was Rattlesnake Canyon. Um, that one was a little bit behind. We got down there, there were tons of barrel cactus down there. Uh, a lot of the different round type cactuses that were all starting to come into flower. Um, and we did find a couple of beaver tails down there as well. Um, it was raining that day. It was pretty miserable as far as the weather went, so we didn't like being in there much. Uh, we, that would be valuable to go to uh, should you be down there, but again, that was about a week late. or it was a, it was, We needed to be there for another week in order for that to be worth it, and that was also quite a drive from our campsite. Again, we stayed in the Arroyo Salado dispersed camp area. Um, it was a great campground. Uh, fire rings were available at all of them, stout uh, metal fire rings and fire grates. Um, and I did some Milky Way photography while I was in there. It is uh, backed up by the highway that runs through there, uh, but it, the noise stopped after about six at night, seven at night, and it wasn't noisy anyway. This area had a ton of ver verbenum, uh, lupine, and in particular, again, the desert lily. We stayed there for about six nights. That was free. There's a vault toilet there. There is no water there, but there's a vault toilet there. And the, whoever, the rangers keep that is so clean, it's crazy. It really worked out well. Uh, lots of toilet paper stocked up, hand sanitizer. Great place. The only thing that that was lacking was trash. They didn't do a good job on the trash there. There wasn't any way to get rid of trash. But um, uh, that was a great place to stay. 
lots of wildflower photography, a couple of really great sunrises. We actually climbed up one of the ridge lines and did some photography up there as well. I did some time-lapse work. I really enjoyed uh, that, that stay to start this process of desert wildflower photography. From there, we worked our way up to Joshua Tree National Park, about a two-hour drive. And primarily the reason that we wanted to be up in the 29 Palms area is to visit my son, who is a Marine, and he lives on the base at 29 Palms. We stayed at a boondocker welcome there. Uh, Dan let us stay at his place. Basically, Dan has produced a rather large parking lot with some uh, asphalt that was given to him on the back of his property. Dan was a great host. He let us stay there for really as long as we wanted to. We stayed for seven nights. We had only originally planned to do three while we were there. And the reason that we stayed for seven is it got oppressively windy, like 30 mile an hour gusts for two days straight. So while we were there, uh, we visited the donut shop that my son had recommended. I recommended if you're in 29 Palms, that donut shop had the best donuts I have ever had in my life. <laughs> it was crazy. I got a haircut at uh, one of the uh, umpteenth millionth barbers in the area. There are a lot of barbers in that area. <laughs> Obviously with the Marine base being there, that just makes perfect sense. We did go into Joshua Tree um, and we were able to do some amazing Milky Way photography. Uh, we timed it just right. Joel was a great assistant to me um, and we, we did catch a couple of really stellar shots uh, of, of the Milky Way that, uh, again, I'm going to make those available uh, in our, on our website eventually as prints that are available for sale. Uh, but this is the first Milky Way photography that I've had an opportunity to do. I did some math. It's been three years. Uh, the last shot that I was able to do with the Milky Way was with my friend John Chapman when we were camping in the Grand Teton National Park at the beginning or the middle of May in, uh, gosh, 2020, four years ago, four years ago. No, nope. 2021, three years ago. So it was amazing uh, doing the Milky Way with the Joshua Tree. And we got a really great sunrise morning at the Barker Dam. Barker Dam is one of my favorite spots to do sunrise photography. And while there were no clouds in the sky to light up the sky with the sun coming up, uh, the Barker Dam, when there's water in it, uh, is a great place to do some morning photography. The light is beautiful. The way it strikes the rocks is amazing. If you can get there at blue light hour, which is before the sun comes up when the sky is magenta and pink and blue. Uh, that's a great time. That dam, uh, obviously the water dries up uh, as the summer progresses, but I think by about May, if there's water in the dam, uh, which there is sometimes and sometimes there's not, depending on the rainfall of the season, um, it, uh, it's a great place to do reflection photography. Uh, that's an, a neat area. It's an easy hike. Um, you do want to be careful when you're in Joshua Tree. Um, the Joshua Tree area uh, is very dry and it can get very hot. We did some photography for the, the sunrise at the Chola Cactus Garden, Choya Cactus Garden, They're commonly known as Teddy Bear Cactus. It is a beautiful area. Uh, you want to be careful there. Those cactuses are dangerous. Uh, if they get in you, it is a real nightmare as far as getting them out. They do not come out easily. I got a couple stuck in my hand uh, when we were in the uh, Coyote Canyon or Rattlesnake Canyon doing, nope, Coyote Canyon, when we were doing some photography there, uh, I had to use uh, my, I carry these pliers, and carry this multi-tool, and thank God I had it because I actually had to use this to get them not only out of my shoes, but out of my hand as well. Quite the process. Quite painful, I might add, too, because they do have poison on them. So we did that, um, and we were very surprised uh, as we were around the, the cactus garden leaving out uh, there was an awful lot of uh, wildflowers in bloom in one specific spot. Joshua Tree is a great area to do wildflower photography, but it's hit and miss because it's, uh, we were at elevation there, probably at 3,000 feet there. Uh, and so you got to time it right as far as the weather goes. Anza Borrego is nearly at sea level. The Borrego Springs area is at sea level. So, of course, that's going to bloom and come uh, very, very uh, uh, bloom abundant uh, first. That's going to be first. So you'd hit that area, the Salton Sea area first, and then as you work your way up through, you gain elevation as you get up to Joshua Tree. And um, that means that things are going to bloom later because it's much colder. So from Joshua Tree, uh, we went out to the Huntington Beach area and spent a little bit of time out there, spent a week out there. We found a campground. Uh, that We paid for that one. It was worth it. It was uh, 20 bucks a night. It's the O'Neill County Park. Um, I recommend it if you're out there. It's run very, very well. 
Um, there isn't me- there, there are no places to do dispersed camping and inexpensive camping uh, as you get closer to the coast of California. They're all pay campgrounds, whether they're run by the state or the county like this one was, um, or private campgrounds. God have mercy on you if you're staying at a private campground. We looked at a couple of them, they're like 100, 120 bucks a night. It's absurd how much stuff costs in California. But uh, the Huntington Beach area, we went down there. There's a dog beach down there. We let Watson run around on the beach with the dog, with the other dogs. Uh, He really enjoyed that. Joel loves the beach. It was cold that morning, but neither one of us are really beach people. So that doesn't appeal to us much. We're more wilderness. And gosh dang, it's busy in that area. It doesn't matter when you're there. There's just so much traffic. So we went from there, from Huntington Beach, up into the Apple Valley area to stop and stay overnight at the Boondocker Welcome on our way up here to the Mojave National Preserve where I'm making this video right now. We're in the -the hole-in-the-wall campground in the Mojave National Preserve. You see behind me the rock formations that go down into a valley. If you climb down, there's a trail, again, that you climb down some rings and go down. Uh, This is one of my favorite areas of the desert. Um, This is a pay campground. It's $12 a night well worth the money. It is out here though. There's no supplies for miles. Um, It's a great area to do Milky Way photography because the sky is so dark. Um, It's one of the darkest skies that I've ever experienced with regard to horizon glow because there's nothing to the south for probably 75, 80 miles. Um, It's a great area to do some hiking. It's a great area to do some wildflower photography if you're here at the right time. We're not here at the right time, but it's still a beautiful area. I I would recommend staying in this campground if you ever come out this way, but just make sure that you're prepared. A couple of trails here to hike. That's great. I love that. We're going to be here for a few more nights, and then we're going to head up to Death Valley. We're going to spend a few days doing some Milky Way photography in the ghost town of Rhyolite, uh, and maybe doing some Milky Way photography inside the park, but also doing some sunrise photography, which is one of my favorite things to do in Death Valley National Park, particularly over the Mesquite Sand Dunes. So you can look forward to some of that coming in uh, future videos, but I just thought that it would be nice to provide you with an update with regard to some things that are going on with us. Again, we're uh, gonna be offering prints now for sale of some of my choice pieces. We're gonna have limited quantities available. They are gonna be available through the store on the website. I would prefer it if you're buying them, you're gonna be buying them through the website. Even if you wanna buy a paper print, you can get stuff for as little as $25. Um, You order them, they're printed. I don't, they're not pre-printed. I don't have an inventory of them. I print them when you order them and ship them directly to your door. Shipping is included. Uh, But this new season of photography, I'm gonna kinda move away from the old inventory and I'm gonna be doing new inventory and I'm gonna be putting the new inventory on the website for sale. I hope that uh, you'll consider buying something. Uh, They are not cheap. I use a very uh, high quality lab they're the, one of the best in the country as far as I'm concerned, but with that comes the price uh, of, of quality. Uh, quality costs money, and uh, you're not going to get these on cheap paper like you would get at one of the Instaprints, if you will, uh, or the, you know, the, the big box stores. These are going to be the utmost quality, in particular the metal and the acrylics are going to be really heirloom. You, you'll be able to pass them on to children if you want to. They're going to be amazing pieces of art that I'm producing specifically for you. I think that's about all I have for you. Um, as, I, as I'm enjoying the morning here in the Mojave National Preserve, up at 4,000 feet, 28 degrees last night in the middle of April, pretty good. Birds all around. I love this area. <laughs> I could live out here if it were possible. It gets a little hot in the summer though, so probably not. But. I hope you enjoyed, you have enjoyed this update. I want to say how much I appreciate all of you, how much I'm glad that you're here. Uh, Many of you are commenting on some of the videos and how helpful they've been in the Winnebago Wednesdays. That is wonderful. I am so happy that I am able to help people out there. Somebody commented just yesterday or the day before that they actually bought the mattress that we bought off of that video, the Talk to Mattress video. Uh, And, uh, how excited they were about how great it is. I told you, (laughs) that mattress is worth every penny of the $1,100 that it cost to buy it. It really is. I do not regret that decision. So, if you've made it this far, if you click there, that's gonna be the video that YouTube thinks that you wanna watch next. This playlist here is gonna be a list of things and places that I recommend that you should see and do as you are out traveling the country. And of course, if you click the circle, 
you're subscribed to the channel. And I would love to have you as a subscriber and part of our channel. Until the next one, Rob out.